Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to be unboxing this Delta Armouries Bravo Silent Ops ETU M4. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking, commenting, and subscribing because those interactions help me get seen by the YouTube algorithms and help the channel grow. The link tree link down in my description will take you to all my socials, including my Discord. Please do stop by and say hello. And if you want to support the channel a little bit more, 99 pence a month uh, to join channel memberships, that's on the join button down below. You get your own chat section in my Discord, custom giveaways, custom videos, and all that kind of stuff. Totally optional, really appreciate it. So we're going to get started. So I have not really heard much about Delta Armouries and I was invited into patrol base to do a bit of a shop uh, store visit and a wander around and, and film a bit of a video which I'm editing to release. I had a great time visiting and uh, whilst I was there one of the guys was like oh have you heard about Delta Armouries and what they're doing and things like that. So I had a quick look uh, and I was like they're promising an awful lot of uh, stuff um, for not an awful lot of money to be honest. So I picked up uh, one, so I specifically went for uh, the Bravo series. So they've got Charlie Bravo Alpha, and then I've seen that they've just released the Freya series as well, which I'm actually interested in. So they range from the Charlie series being sort of all polymer based, uh, up to Bravo, which is polymer body with some metal accessories, up to Alpha, which is all metal, uh, and then they do ETU variants as well, which have got a programmable ETU. They've all got a tight ball barrel, I think it's 6.03. I'll confirm if it's different down at the bottom in text. Um, uh, something I will talk about a little bit later on is that they will all come with the uh, R-Hop style booking installed, but I'll talk about that shortly. There is a, sort of a lot of um, sort of like stuff here for your money. Um, so I was keen to have a look. So the box itself then, quite like the image uh, on the front, big branding. Uh, you've got evidence there that it is a quick change spring system. You just have to take off the stock tube um, and, and it's that quick and easy. Uh, we've got Delta Armouries on the back, a bit about the model on that end there. Um, and then um, that's basically everything for the box. So we'll get into the box then. So we've got a manual, which is double-sided. Uh, so English is on one side of it, just the bare minimums, just to get you up and running. If you want more about the ETU, we'll discuss that shortly. Foam lid, get that out of the way. We've got our classic bags of silica gel because we all need those. We've got a 120 round mid cap, 140 round mid cap, 120 round mid cap, uh, which uh, I'll talk about in a moment. And we've got the CQB herself, uh, which is a pretty damn fine piece of kit. Uh, let's just check. That is everything. We'll get that out of the way now. Disclaimer before I begin, I have run this for two full game days before this video. So this is not technically a virgin unboxing. This is an experienced unboxing. Um, so I have put approximately, I'm almost ashamed to say this, across two game days, about 10,000 VBs have been through this AEG. Or close, between eight and 10,000. Uh, so I played two game days at Skirmish Airsoft. And um, if you haven't played there at the Mansfield one, it is a very trigger happy day. And I had a great day. Uh, I took this out, not expecting an awful lot. And the first day I ran it with a stock hop rubber. And the guy I spoke to said that the stock rubber, they had seen some issues with it. Uh, and that basically people had said it had ripped or, or got damaged after a few thousand rounds. And that basically from June of 2024, that's June this year, if you're watching it still in 2024, um, they are replacing all of them every single one will ship with their uh, R-Hop system in place, their R-Hop rubbery, uh, rubber, which I'll talk again about shortly. Now out of the box, I was impressed with the range, easily over 50, sort of 55 plus meters without a problem whatsoever. I got power into my day, I thought my hop rubber had broken, I switched to something else for the rest of the day. Uh, messaged a guy and went, yeah, I think I've seen it, the hop rubber. I bought this, which cost me £10 to get the rubber, the Omega knob and the enhanced harm, just £10 um, because I thought it was broken. I replaced it uh, and as I was replacing it, it turns out there was basically something in my mag 
my mag which had clogged the hop and it was basically a metal shaving uh, i don't even know where that's come from but basically it wedged a bb in the hop um, so it was just misfeeding and all sorts of things so i swapped the hops back around after i tested that one out they both work perfectly which is why i've been able to do what i've been able to do in this video which i'll talk about a little bit more so um absolutely like I am, I, if you know me and you talk to me a lot, particularly in Discord and things like that, you will know I am all about the AK platform. I love AKs. I am not a massive sort of AR kind of guy. I've been there, I've done that, I've come away from it. This has really converted me back. I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed running it from a rate of fire point of view, risk trigger response point of view. The range has just blow my mind the fact that you have got the polymer body which is rock solid and you've got the metal front end that gives you that bit of weight in it has just been an absolute workhorse you know ten thousand rounds in and it is still shooting beautifully you know like it did the first bb out of it um, so we'll get into this that was something i caveat and, and, and we'll reference things as we're going along so at the front then we've got a metal suppressor now this metal suppressor it is on a negative 40 mil thread However, just a point to note, the inner barrel does come up through this suppressor. So obviously, if you're thinking about changing it for something shorter, you know, think about that, that it does come inside uh, this accessory. Um, screw that back down again. So we have then got our metal um, hand, handguard, a sort of quad rail handguard, which is secured down via these little set screws on here. So you've got four set screws. It is extremely solid. I gave it an absolute punishing over across two game days, running around like a real loon, and it's just laughed off everything. You can see there is slight marks. That is from two full heavy usage days of it, uh, playing quite aggressively. The flip-up sights, you just pull back on these little tabs and they flick open they are very easy to get sighted down um very easy to get sighted down and i found them really really effective and useful uh, and, I, and i ran those without any issues all day the rear sight flick it back open has got a, a choice of aperture that you can put up a smaller one or open it wide and then the front one obviously is adjustable up and down um, it just takes a little bit of fiddling to get that up and down uh, but they are fully removable the body then is a polymer now this thing you know the stock wobbles a little bit if i secure the stock it is pretty silent there is no wobble in it there's very little flex or bend you know i was not gentle with this thing and look at how good it still looks after two very heavy usage days. You know, it still looks fantastic. I love the cut that they've got. I like the, the little bit rougher edges that it's not quite rounded. I like that little bit more almost aggressive cut to, to, to the plastic shape and things. The mag release, nice and nice and jiggly, easy to just catch with your finger. Get that mag out straight away. Throw another mag in, ever so slightly flared. I had no issues getting mags in. Um, I'll talk about mags before going to the uh, the shooting stuff and what have you. The trigger, I love the little flat trigger. I like that that's a, a, a standard feature of it. Nice big open um, trigger guard so you can get your glove fingers in. The pistol grip, all nice rounded corners. There's nothing sharp there that's even running barehanded. I'm not going to have any issues with that. you got nice stippling effect there, obviously for grip, uh, to uh, obviously keep hold of it with. Uh, coming back at bottom of the pistol grip, we have got a big hex head screw in the bottom. Now, again, based on the hot rubber, uh, the guy I spoke to said that they are listening and taking feedback all the time. They are changing the pistol grip style, uh, uh, particularly the base plate. It's not going to be this pinch and remove one. Excuse me. It's going to be one with a little pull tab to release the pistol base, um, the motor base plate to get the motor in and out because they've said that they've had some issues with this. Um, so again, they've listened to feedback and they're improving. That's where the hop improvement thing has sort of come from. Just like absolutely phenomenal. Then we've got the stock. Now it is a slim style. It does look like a crane stock. Uh, the, the base plate, the back plate does not come off, uh, but it does come out and it very easily just comes off. It is one of the nicest stocks I've ever had to work with from an AR platform point of view. So just get that on and off and it positions itself really nice and easy 
you know, it's just been phenomenal. It is a six position stock tube as well. So you've got a, a load of variety in there for fine tuning your positioning. Now I found just clicking it one out has been my perfect sort of just, I like to be very close, very small. Um, that has worked perfect for me. Um, it is, honestly, I cannot sort of tell you enough how fantastically impressed I have been with this system. Now the ETU, out of the box, I basically did nothing with it, just run it as st standard. So the standard is safe, semi-auto, full auto, no bells and whistles, just stock firing modes. And that works for 99% of my use cases. Now the ETU itself, I have released just before this video, I've released, or just after this video, um, an ETU programming guide basically. So you can enable binary trigger for uh, single shots. So you've got semi-auto, and semi-auto that's a binary trigger. If you don't know what that is, as you pull the trigger, you get a shot, and as you let go of the trigger, you get a shot again. Effectively doubling your rate of fire. Some sites do not like it. Uh, they, they, they ban it, so before you enable it, check with the site. The other option that you've got um, is that you can enable three shot burst for instead of auto, and you can turn it back to auto again. And the last configurable option is uh, the, the amount of pre-cocking. There are five settings for pre-cocking, ranging from weakest to strongest. Um, in the programming video, I do talk about the caveat that if you do it too high, it might be that you get two shots on um, single because it's already wound back. And by the time it's whacked forward, the gear set can't be stopped quite quick enough. So you might get two shots. So obviously just something to think about and, and, and play about with and things. As a side note, just realised the uh, label on the battery, if you scan the QR code, will take you to the manual uh, for the ETU and programming it as well. Um, already, you know, you can probably hear my enthusiasm. I have really, really enjoyed this sort of thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go and show you uh, the Chrono with and without the R-Hop. Um, I'm going to show you the range with and without the R hop, uh, and I'm going to sort of confirm and, and tell you now that when I've run it, I've run it uh, using the included mid cap, which absolutely fed lovely, which you would assume it would do. I've then run it with a battle axe flash mag, which fed absolutely beautifully. I've run it with a new pro wind up high cap again, which fit and fed absolutely beautifully. I've run it with uh, a, I think it's a SEMA high cap again, fit and fed beautifully. And then I had, at one point, I had a KWA um, 120 round mag thrown at me because I was getting low on ammo. That fit and fed beautifully as well. There was another brand that somebody else threw me as well. I can't remember what the other brand was, but there was another brand, large brand. I want to say g, &G it might have been g, g got thrown at me. And again, that went in and fed beautifully as well. So what's that? Four, five, six brands of mags fit and fed lovely. It, I couldn't fault it at all. Um, so, I'll be back in a second uh, once I've shown you those shooting tests. About 12, 12 and a half rounds a second. Oh. <laughs> Consistently 20 and a half rounds a second. Minimum 299, max 305, average 302, which is not too bad, a little bit lower than the uh, flat hop one. Um, and that's obviously bedded in <coughs> as well. Minimum 304, maximum 313, average 310. And the 304 is a, a random one at, at, at best. It's uh, Other than that, it's uh, really quite stable. Just about making 50, 55 meters.
easily over 55 meters without even a question so showing you that footage now um so just to review it without the air hop um sort of 55 ish meters just over 55 meters with the air hop well over 60 meters you know the, the distances i was hitting people uh, at skirmish just like absolutely insane a couple of players that went with me were even like how have you how have you managed to get somebody that that far away absolutely just insane it, it blew me away um rate of fire about 12 and a half rounds a second on 7.4 um you know fairly standard i'm happy with that it didn't feel underpowered at all um on an 11.1 then obviously 20 just over 20 rounds a second really sort of came alive don't forget chrono wise this has been made safe for uk limits so yes it is running at a little bit low for uk limits that's totally fine and it did not affect range at all in any way shape or form it all that matters about is how quickly your bb gets down that range um so i am aware out of the factory they come out at about sort of 390 to 400 fps so if you are buying it outside of the uk those are the kind of fps's that you can expect from it um so just keep that in mind so really really just a fantastic piece of kit um i did forget to mention it is a rotary hop unit and it is rolled down to apply hop unit um the our hop the fact that these this is going to come pre-installed in everything from june onwards is just phenomenal i wouldn't even hesitate you know to buy one now and, and for the sake of 10 pound for that kit to put that in the difference is just unbelievable you know i didn't think you'd make an awful lot but it was an enormous difference and it just absolutely blew me away like like massively blew me away So, uh, we'll do the gloved operations and then we'll talk about batteries. So, thanks again to the guys uh, on my Discord that have made this suggestion for me. Um, I think it's great. If you have got a suggestion, please you know, drop a comment of things. The range I know about, I want a better range. I want one I can do a bit more accuracy and things. Yes, I'm with you on that one. So, you don't need to comment on that one. But if you've got something else, uh, I do know somebody has commented that having a magnet to show what steel and... and, and uh, alloy and things like that is probably a good idea so that's something i'm going to pursue as well so uh, in terms of glove operation i can very easily operate those flip up sights with absolutely no problem whatsoever i can easily get that magazine in and out without any issues the selector is easy the hop unit i can adjust it but again that feeling it's getting in the way i couldn't tactilely tell you what kind of adjustment i have made there other than to just test shoot it I can adjust that stock easily enough. I can get that stock off. I can get that battery in and out without any real issues whatsoever. Um, I am happy that that is entirely usable with gloves on without any problems whatsoever. Um, the mid cap with a speed loader, I'd be able to speed load as well quite easily. So coming to the batteries then before we sort of finish up. Now we are stuck to stock tube lipos. So I brought these two to show you. So I've got 1200, a 7.4 and an 11.1, 1200 milliamp batteries. It is wired to Dean's, which I like immensely because yes, Tamiya probably isn't much different initially when it's new, but over time those Tamiya connectors widen off and they, loose, they loosen off. They create more resistance and things. Dean's stays much more consistent. I know that there are better, some people prefer is it XT30s and things like that. So I've seen other connectors as well. So the 1200 going in there. Now, if you like your stock quite a chunk way out, you know, sort of possibly even nearly fully extended based on that, then you know, something like that 1200, either size 7.4 and 11.1 will be perfect. If you prefer it to go all the way in, something like this giant power, um 11 uh, 1000 milliamp 7.4 will go all the way down inside the stock tube with plenty of room for all your wiring to compress in there and stay out of the way but you're probably going to need a couple of any of these batteries depending on how trigger happy you are uh, and then i've got uh, that's actually 7.4 but i've got or had had 
I have got, they are virtually identical dimensions, an 1100, 11.1 .1 LiPo. Now that goes absolutely beautifully down in there and allows me to connect that up and sit nicely inside of there and put the stock back on. So my recommendation would be this 11.1, 1100 or something like that, 1450, 7.4 that sits entirely down inside of there with loads of room. You've got sort of about an inch of room there for your wiring to coil up and things like that. You know, those are the kind of places you're looking for. So Delta Armouries then, they have a range of models going from Charlie, which is all plastic, Bravo, which is a mix, Alpha, which is all metal, or just about all metal where appropriate. Then they've got the new Freya range. They've got ETU versions within there as well. Um, there is isn't You are getting a hell of a lot for your money. I'm not going to lie. It, it is blowing me away to the point where I am semi sort of convert back to the, the land of AR because this has been so good. Um, so I would wholeheartedly recommend trying out and having a look at the Delta Armoury stuff in general because I am pretty sure you will not be disappointed. I will leave the usual photos at the end. Uh, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. I will see you next time. I've enjoyed that immensely. Bye.